Hey, Olivia, <laughs> where are you from? I'm from Falls Church, Virginia. And what was it like moving to Harvard? It was a lot at first, but um, I knew I was starting something super exciting, so I was ready. Uh, what did you study at Harvard? I concentrated in environmental science and engineering. And why did you choose that? I think I chose that because I really believe in science and I believe that our planet has the potential for a more sustainable future, but there just currently aren't enough women in STEM who um, you know, are working on solving that problem. Cool, and what was your favorite class? Definitely implied environmental toxicology. Hmm. Why was it your favorite? I think that it was my favorite because I was really able to start to understand the deep ways that human activity has and continues to put toxic chemicals into our natural environment and also our human bodies. Um, the first day of class, we were told that there are over hundreds and there are hundreds of thousands of chemicals that are used in manufacturing every day and less than a hundred of them are regulated with enforceable laws. So that's less than 0.1%. Wow. Uh, and who was your favorite professor? The professor of that class, which was Professor Elsie Sunderland. What qualities do you think great professors have? This is a hard question, but I think at their core, great professors just have an infectious passion for what they do, and they try their best every day to share that knowledge. Um, it was important to Professor Sunderland specifically that we not only learned the facts ourselves as scientists, but also learned how to share that information with everyone else to help the whole world understand um, why they as individuals should care. Did you write a thesis? Yes. And what was your thesis about? It was called um, Engineering an Aquaponics Garden System for Inpatient Hospital Rooms. Cool. And um, could you give me a quick take about your thesis? Sure. So my elevator pitch, which I had to practice a lot, was being around and eating green things is an incredibly therapeutic thing, but in hospitals, living plants are typically prohibited because their bioaerosols can have negative impacts on patients who are immunocompromised or at risk. So it was my goal to see if it was possible to safely provide those patients who are living in hospitals with daily access to fresh um, and beneficial produce. So. I designed and prototyped a small scale indoor sterile hydroponic garden, and I was able to prove um, that my device could limit bioaerosols up to 99%. That's amazing. Can you explain to me one concept that you learned from environmental engineering? Sure. Um, in a class called Physical uh, Oceanography and Climate, I learned that those giant swirling whirlpools in the end of Pirates of Caribbean at World End um, is a real thing. They're called ocean eddies and they swirl downwards and sometimes sharks will hitch rides on them to um, hunt for fish at lower ocean depths. If you didn't study environmental engineering, what would you have studied? I think I would have studied history and science. I think that was a really interesting concentration. What academic building did you spend most of your time in? Oof, probably either Maxwell Dworkin or Pierce Hall. Can you describe either of those buildings? Sure, I'm picturing Pierce Hall basement right now, which is where all of the undergraduate engineering labs are. And there's just a lot of cool science crap down there and even cooler science people like the lab attendants and um, of course my engineering peers. What was freshman year like? Oof, um, blurry and a wild ride. <laughs> What's one memory you had from freshman year? Um, I think that I'll never forget housing day. Um, 20 Adams upperclassmen stormed our fourth floor Canada B room and tears and orange juice and other things were spilled. It was a great time. <laughs> what was your hardest semester? Oh, definitely sophomore spring. And what made it so hard? Fluid mechanics <laughs> and um, fluid mechanics plus a division one uh, softball season. So definitely that. What was the hardest class you took? Fluid mechanics, <laughs> technically <laughs> called fluid mechanics and transport processes. Um, yeah, it got me good that semester. What was your favorite semester and why? Um, senior spring, even though it 
wasn't what we all thought it was going to be. It was amazing and wonderful nonetheless. So I heard that you are currently a production technician at a cannabis manufacturer. What do you do in your job? So I'm a production tech um, and we're a professional indoor hydroponic cannabis manufacturer. So we, um, I'm responsible for monitoring and manipulating all of the environmentals within each grow room. So that's the temperature, the humidity, the CO2 concentration. Um, and then I also do routine maintenance on the hydroponic system itself. So that's the irrigation, the um, drainage, plumbing, the lighting, stuff like that. And how do you apply what you've learned to your job, if at all? Um, yeah, I think honestly the most helpful things that I've used in my job are probably my problem solving skills and my Excel shortcuts that I've learned. <laughs> Tell me something that most people don't know about cannabis manufacturing. Oof, it's not easy growing weed. <laughs> people think it is, but it's not. And it's actually a really delicate science. Um, so it takes a strong team effort. What was it like to graduate during a pandemic? Uh, um, well, it started with my mom popping a bottle of champagne in my childhood bedroom. Um, and then I just got drunk with my family and graduated Harvard via a PowerPoint slide on our TV. It wasn't mm -hmm. what I expected, but I was incredibly proud of, of my accomplishment nonetheless. At Harvard, what house did you live in? Adam's house. <laughs> How far was your house from most of your classes? Uh, usually if I got out the door by 8.49, I could make most of my 9 a.m. classes. Nice. Uh, what was your favorite dining hall? Quincy, 100%. Um, I love Adams, but the windows and the staff and the brain break at Quincy were definitely the best. Hmm, agree. I saw that you were <laughs> in dorm crew. What is dorm crew and how was it? Yeah, dorm crew is a student run on campus service provider. So we provide custodial and maintenance services for the university. Um, I started my freshman fall and worked all four years. Um, I really think it's probably the most genuine and hardworking group of people on campus. What are the other activities did you do on campus? I played softball and I was also a member of the FDL. What was it like being on a Div 1 varsity sport? It was all consuming at times, most of the time, but I really learned a lot of important life skills and um, I met some of my closest lifelong friends there. Wow. How many hours would you say you spent on softball? This is also a tough one. Probably in season when we were traveling, definitely 40 plus hours a week easy. But wow. um, in the off season, maybe an average of, of 20 or so. What did you like about playing sports on campus? I really loved the game itself. I always have. I've played it my whole life. So when I was out there on the fields or in the batter's box, um, it felt like I was a kid out at recess. and. Um, that was really, really a fun time to just be away from the craziness of class and homework. What was your favorite spot on campus? Definitely Weeks Bridge when it was nice out. Um, just walking down there with my friends was, was always a good time. And what did you do sophomore summer? Sophomore summer, I lived on campus in the Kirkland Annex, actually, and I proctored for the Harvard Summer School. Um, and I also worked for the Harvard University Center for the Environment and Mass Gen Hospital as a research intern. Cool. Can you tell me something cool about hospital energy waste? Yeah, so I guess a fun fact was in 2019, I gotta pull it up because it's a fun fact. <laughs> um, into 2019, the hospitals alone consumed over 10% of the U.S. commercial sector's total annual, annual energy consumption. So hospitals alone consumed over 10% of that, which is kind of crazy. Wow. And what did you do your junior summer? My junior summer, I was an engineering intern at an eco bed and breakfast in the El Yunque Rainforest in Rio Grande, Puerto Rico. Um, I designed and modeled a sustainable solar heated swimming pool for their eco business there. What was your favorite thing about working in Puerto Rico? Ooh, definitely. Ugh, this is a little cheesy, but the sounds of the rainforest. I don't think I'll ever sleep as soundly as I did um, in the middle of that jungle. What is one of your best memories from that summer? 
One of my best memories, probably camping on, on an island off the coast of Puerto Rico called Culebra. How big is the environmental engineering concentration? Pretty small. Um, there were only six of us in the SB program and then I think five more engineers in the AB program. So 11 overall. Wow. Do people ever confuse your degree with the planetary studies or uh, formerly visual and environmental studies at Harvard? Maybe. Um, there was definitely some overlap between the EPS and the ESE classes, but not so much overlap with the VES and or now AFVS classes. What would you tell someone who's thinking about declaring environmental engineering? Oof. Um, no, it's not an easy engineering. Um, it's going to be hard, but if you really want to know how and why our Earth works the way it does, then I would say go for it. What would you do differently about your experience? I would have asked for help more. I think that it's easy for Harvard students to get sucked into the I'm more stressed than you are type world, but learning is supposed to be fun, so ask for help. What would you tell your freshman self? I would tell my freshman self, don't worry, Donald will be fired in 2020. And what will the environment be like in 50 years? I honestly don't know, but if I have anything to do with it, hopefully it's livable for everyone. What do you think you'll be doing in 50 years? I will be somewhere um, with trees and mountains and a squadron of dogs, cats, and maybe some goats. How can people get more involved with helping the environment? Um, sure. So I definitely encourage people to, to want to get involved, but the fact is that 70% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions in the last 20 years has um, can be attributed to just 100 fossil fuel producers. So 100 companies are responsible for 70% of our problem currently. So if people as individuals really want to get involved, um, I would say use your consumer and your voting power to vote for representatives that are going to push um, institutions to divest in gross monopolies and invest in sustainability. So I'm talking to you at Harvard's $41 billion endowment. Great, and this is my last question. What is one of your favorite Harvard memories? One of my favorite Harvard mm -hmm. memories was Harvard Yale at Yale my sophomore year. Memories may not be um, the correct word, but I'll never forget it for sure. Great, thank you so much, Olivia. Of course, thank you.